Hi, it's Matt in the kitchen. I'm here with my pressure cooker and tonight I'm actually going to make a prime rib. Now that's something you really don't think pressure cooker prime rib. Uh, but I'm going to show you how I do it to, uh, to give it a little bit more of that flavor and cook it a lot faster. So here I've got about five pounds of, uh, of prime rib and I'm going to brown, I'm going to sear the outside. So what, for that, I've actually gone, I've got my cast iron frying pan nice and hot. So sorry about the background, but noise, but that's uh, the fan, the exhaust fan for the gas stove. Oil's nice and hot, pan's nice and hot. You can try to do it with tongs, but again, I just use my hands. We'll just go and we'll spin it around and sear up the, the edges a little bit. Whew. You can see that it's searing it up quite quickly, quite nicely. Cast iron is ideal for this. Cast iron holds a lot of heat, transfers that heat really nicely. Uh, I really do love my cast iron frying pan. It's also really good for bacon. Love cooking in there. So you can see there, nicely seared in to help uh, lock in those juices. I'm just going to flip it to the other side, let it get a bit more heat. Nice thing about the cast iron is that it just it just distributes that heat so nice and evenly around there. It is hot. So I'm really trying to sear all the meat to get that held in there. Um, if I had that little big uh, metal forks, you could use that to hold it. I actually don't like those very much. Uh, they just don't seem to work with me for whatever reason. So again, you know, use your hands, you'll just have to wash them afterwards, but if you're cooking, you're washing your hands anyway. Not a big deal. So look at that. Sears up in just in no time. Whew. Of course, my cast iron frying pan is sliding around a little bit. So I'm just going to turn that off. Off. Move that out of the way. So now I've got it. It's nicely seared. Now I'm actually going to do the uh, get the pressure cooker ready. So meat seared, nice, nice uh, layer around, all around. Pressure cooker, it's pretty simple. I'm going to add in my cup of water. So just a cup of water in the bottom. Now seasoning, throw in whatever seasoning you want. Uh, so for me, seasoning I want, I'm going to throw in a bit of garlic, just throw that in the bottom. Got a bit of thyme and rosemary. Fresh spices are always very nice. Really doesn't look like a lot of water. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So I'm gonna put a little bit, just under two cups in there. So there's my spicing. Now I don't actually want to have the meat on the bottom of the pressure cooker because it's gonna be in there for quite a while. So I'm going to use this lifting thing. I think I've shown it a few times before. Goes it dishes out to carry it. Don't need the whole thing. You could use balls of aluminum foil. Uh, those do do work. But I'm just going to use this. I'm going to disassemble it a little bit. So you can actually twist and pull out the handle. And then these arms, they just pop off. There's a little, little thing there. I'm just going to go pop up, break this down a little. Hopefully I don't lose these while it's cooking. But I'm just going to use it. It's just going to be a little elevated plate for the meat to sit on. Uh, the reason I'm taking it apart is because this is a five pound prime rib and it fills up the entire pressure cooker right to the top. So I'm just going to sit that in there. You can see, oops, see there it is in the bottom, just to keep the meat out of the water. Now the other thing is you've got to season your prime rib. Let me move this so you can see it a little bit better. See, I'm just going to move the tripod. Oops. So we've got our we've got our meat. I'm just going to go and put basically some steaks, um, a steak seasoning with a little bit of salt. So salt, pepper, some miscellaneous spices. Don't want to overdo it because if it gets too salty, that's kind of gross. So I'll put it a little bit heavier on the actual fat. 
Um, I did break it down in my mortar and pestle. You could use a mini chopper or a food processor to make a really nice, fine, fine mix. A lot of stuff is nice and coarse. That's good. But I really want this to be the flavor permeating into the meat. Don't want it to be big chunks of pepper on the outside. That's not the way I'm cooking this. So, again, just a little bit of light seasoning rubbed on. You know, I, I know, I've... I love cooking with my hands. If you don't, you can try to do this with uh, utensils. Good luck, it's quite difficult. So I'm gonna take it and put it in. So they do say to put the bone side down. It's really, I'm not sure that's gonna fit. That's pretty, that's pretty huge. Uh, just gonna spin it a little bit. So I'm just looking at the top. I wanna make sure the safety valves are actually clear of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna push this off the side. Hopefully the safety valve is clear. Let's see if that closes. Look at that, beautiful. So the safety valve is behind, is safety valve is in the back here. I'm gonna to try to keep that, keep that clear. I wanna make sure it's safe. So for this amount of meat, I'm gonna try 45 minutes. So it's five pounds, 45 minutes in the pressure cooker. So 45 minutes of pressure cooking. So that's gonna be quite a while. Uh, when it's done, we'll, we'll see what we got. Pack. Uh, it didn't actually, just so you know, this, uh, this uh, prime rib actually ended up taking about an hour. Uh, so after 45 minutes, I went, I checked it with my meat thermometer to make sure it was cooked all the way through. Not hot enough. I threw it in for another 10 minutes, uh, put it in, then threw it in for another 10 minutes again before it was finally at the temperature to make sure it was uh, cooked properly. So do go and grab a little uh, meat thermometer. You just stab it in, make sure you don't get to the bone. Uh, don't touch a bone or anything, but you want it nicely in the middle. I can see that it's really juicy. The juice just wells up from where I put the meat in. So I'm gonna pop this out and slice it up. Now, if you don't like my uh, my carving technique, uh, complain, tell me a better way to do it. Uh, or just leave comments. Uh, but really, it's really not that hard. It is a bit hot, so I'm actually going to use tongs. Oops. It's also very tender, which means it wants to fall apart, making this quite quick, quite tricky. Anyway, go get a nice big spoon. Don't want to use anything uh, anything hard metal because I'll scratch my pressure cooker. So here we go. I'm just got that off to the side. You can see it's just crumbling apart. It is just so, so tender. It's really the way you want it done. Amazing flavor as well. So it took on a little bit of the flavor. It's not overpowering. Just a beautiful primer. So the bone actually runs through here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sharp knife. It would be nice if I had a, a thinner knife. I'm just gonna go and try to trace it right along the bone. Get those bones out. Now the bones you can use for stock, or you can just pick them clean, clean like uh, like ribs, since they're beef ribs. So I cook this. I cook this to be on the on the medium rare rare side. You can see here, it's got the great texture, very nicely cut. It is so hot. So you can let it rest for a while, um, which I would I would recommend letting it rest for a while. But let's just go and cut a nice, nice thin piece off. I do need a better knife for this. I'm really not pushing that hard. I don't want to. I don't want this to uh, fall apart. But you can see here, nice, nice piece of prime rib, just falling off, really nice and soft. I have to sharpen this knife. I don't know. Some of my video. Sometimes in my videos, I just talk and ramble on about things. But you know, what are the thoughts going through my head? Look at look at that beautiful primary. Let me just put that out there. Look at that. That's that is a nice piece of prime rib. So you can see it's cooked all the way through. It's got a lot of juice coming out. If you want it cooked a little bit better, uh, go ahead up the time a little bit. Get that meat meat thermometer 
get it to that higher temperature you want to see if you want it well done or, or whatever. Personally, uh, I like mine on the on the medium rare, rare side of things. But I know I've checked this with the temperature. It's cooked all the way through. Um, it's going to be a really nice, nice uh, prime rib. It's really important though. Make sure you stat when you check the temperature. Get right into the middle. This is where you want to check the temperature. The outside is going to cook up very quickly to um, to those um, more well done, the more well done side. It's the middle that you really want to make sure is cooked to the right temperature. So that's all for now. Hopefully you find this useful. Um, it's a really nice way to cook prime rib, as you can see. I mentioned before, it's just it's just falling apart. Gives you that great flavor. In well, in this case, it took me about an hour because it's a nice big cut of meat. But it's a lot less time than cooking up from scratch. The flavor, the texture, and everything else, excellent with this meat. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's a great way to cook these uh, cuts of meat in a lot less time. If you like this video, like the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel. Check out some of my other recipes. Uh, you know, Feel free to ask questions or uh, leave comments about what you like or anything you'd like to see, and I'll try to help you out. That's all for now. Good night.